Hello and welcome. My name is James Rice and I'm cybersecurity faculty here at Mohawk Valley Community College. Now, as one of the contributors to the CAE Cyber Sandbox, uh, I'd like to uh, give a quick preview as to what does it look like to click some of the buttons and launch the challenges here for the first time. So uh, let, let's jump right into it. Now, uh, over at c2games.org, you'll see uh, the, at our links here at the top, there's our sandbox link and a how to get started link. So uh, I'm going over some of the information that you're going to find sort of in a text version of that. So if you click on the sandbox, you can either click the how to guide or it, it takes you to the same this this how to get started link uh, from the drop down menu. But uh, and, and the reason why I'm emphasizing this is sometimes we prefer just to have some picture references with the basic steps. And so that that is what we've put here on this page. And I'm going to walk through it here to, so you can see what it looks like in action and give you a little bit of the background and perspective of what's happening as we go through this. So, all right, so let's give it a try. So if we're at the sandbox and we wanted to try one of the challenges, of course, we're gonna have to get logged in. So you can click the login button in the upper right where you can try logging into one of your accounts. I'll log into one of the accounts that I have access to here. Um, let's type the password correctly. That would probably help. Um, and of course, if you don't have an account yet, you can just click the register button right there to go ahead and become authorized and, and log in. So uh, once you're logged in, it should now say, howdy, welcome. Uh, if you're from a verified uh, CAE institution, everything should be pretty straightforward from there. And then you can go and visit our sandbox page. Now from the sandbox page, we have a bunch of uh, uh, buttons here off the website that allow you to interact directly with our virtual environment. And so we have these different challenges that you can launch and manage and interact with all right here from the sandbox page. Now the challenges are significantly different. They're different style challenges. And so what I wanna emphasize about that is one of the first things that you should do is learn how to actually play the challenge. What is the nature of the challenge? What's the spirit of what we're trying to get at and, and challenge you as the participant to, to try to learn and try to do. So in other words, you should check out the how to play links. Uh, each one of these are little background videos that explain the purpose of the challenge, how to get started the challenge and if you just jump right into it and say start you're going to be sitting there with an environment going i don't really know what to do i don't know what how i'm supposed to accomplish the task so definitely take some time and watch uh, watch the initial video at least to start um but from there let's say i want to go and launch one of these challenges i'll just pick one like the mini hex challenge this is a good one to kind of see um and so what we have here is we have some buttons that allow you to create an environment and, and you just have to wait a moment after logging in because it's checking some of the environment stuff in the background to see whether you already have one or not but let's go ahead and give it a try so i'll click create environment you'll see that uh, some little gears here will spin and uh, what's happening of course is in our virtual environment where the activities are actually uh, uh spinning up um, uh, you're going to have an entirely closed off virtual network of computers, at least for this challenge, that, uh, that allow you as the student or as the player to kind of experience the challenge, try it out for yourself, all in a nice contained environment. Um, so uh, normally you're going to want to usually hit start and then launch, but I'm going to kind of cheat here in this little video and I'll, I'll, I'll show the behind the scenes kind of what this looks like. And I'll, I'll hit the launch button first, but the launch button will take you over to the actual sandbox virtual environment where you can just verify your account again, go ahead and click the login button and you'll just type in your credentials again, just doing another little security check. Same thing as before. Jay Rice at MVCC. We can type in our super awesome, super secret password that I'm definitely not sharing with you guys. Okay. And then we'll be able to come over here and see what's happening. Now I click the create environment. And of course, what's happened here is you can now see there's some virtual machines now on the list. All right. So you can kind of tell here that in order to see your virtual machines, many times the, the interface kind of hides them. And so it's, it's useful to know like, okay, let's grab this little bar and, and stretch this over. So then you can actually see your virtual machines. And sometimes they're like, they're hiding off of this drop down as well. Um, and so just let, let, let's learn how to use the UI, stretch this out a little bit, and, and here's your virtual machines. They're on, they're on the list sort of here on the left. Um, now to start, when you create an environment, all your virtual machines are turned off on the server. All right. And so what you definitely want to do is you want to use the start button that's part of the website, part of the actual c2games.org slash sandbox page. You have a start environment here. The launch environment just opens another tab to the virtual environment. And so once you've already author once you've already authenticated once through the virtual environment, you don't have to click the launch button multiple times. All we really need here is two tabs to kind of manage everything that we need to manage. So I'll close that extra tab. And that's what's going to happen every single time you hit the launch button, whether you hit the launch button for a mini hack, the launch button for the Pac-Man ping game or for the World of Bills challenge, whichever one it might be, the launch it just all opens up the same environment. So you only have to hit that launch button once to get over to this particular link here. But uh, here's kind of where some of the magic happens is when you 
actually go to hit the start button. Um, you can kind of tell based on the CPU usage, memory usage, all these, they're all off right now. No, nothing's actually turned on. So you've had a bundle of virtual machines that's been created for you to complete the challenge, but none of them are actually turned on and you have to hit the start button. So we'll come back over here to our interface and we'll click the start button over here. And again, this will take a minute. Um, but we'll just kind of let it go. And when we come back over to the virtual environment, or if you click the launch button, it'll just open there in a new tab, you should start to see some things fire up. Now, I want to emphasize about that start button. What you don't want to do is try to manage your virtual machines here through this interface. Um, in other words, if I were to right click on something here and say start or stop or shut down or whatever, like don't, don't interact with those buttons there because there are also other virtual machines that you don't see. These are just the ones that have been assigned to you that you do see. You do have some machines that have been assigned to you that you don't see. Um, and so if you manually go in and kind of turn things on and you think, oh, I got it, I figured it out. It's like, no, there's other things you're not going to have direct access to that those are not started. Those are not running. And so you do have to manage some of those. And that's why we emphasize learn how to use these buttons. You've got a start button. It'll change to pause and destroy once things have kind of been turned on. Um, but nevertheless, this, this is kind of going to be the interface, your portal to accessing your different virtual machines. Now, if you were to create multiple bundles, multiple challenges, right, we could create the Pac-Man one, we could create the Bills, we could create the Mini Hacks, you're going to start seeing other virtual machines popping up on this list. And that's kind of why they've been named accordingly. You'll have ones that are named Mini Hack, you'll have ones that are named PMP for Pac-Man Ping, and finally Bill for the World of Bills. All right, so you have to kind of pay attention to which virtual machines are actually assigned to the challenge and which ones are part of another challenge. They're all just going to show up here on your list under this, uh, all under your same account. Um, but nevertheless, it's like, okay, great. Now, now I've got my virtual machines. They're turned on. How do I see them? Um, and uh, the easy way, of course, is to just double click. If, if you have pop-ups enabled, you should just be able to double click on one of the virtual machines on this list and your interface, your console will pop open here in a new console tab. Uh, or in a new console window. Um, if you don't have pop-ups enabled, probably your browser will give you a little warning, right? It's going to say, hey, something's trying to pop up, and you will and you should go and allow pop-ups. So allowing pop-ups for c2games.org, that's a safe thing to do. We're not going to be sending you anything that, that you don't want to see, uh, that you don't want to get access to. So these things, running them in a pop-up is going to be good. Um, the other way that I show how to do it from the text perspective is to right-click on it and then to say console. All right, you could right click on it and say console. It does the same thing. It's the same thing as double clicking on it. Yeah, it's another way to kind of get it here in a pop up. Um, you also could click the button in the upper right. You can notice all the way in the upper right, there's a console button. You know, a lot of different ways to do the same thing. However, you want to get to the console, you know, it's fine. Doesn't really matter. Um, the one that I don't really recommend doing is you can run a console all here in this same window. All right, and so if you click the console button here, kind of down the middle, this will also give you a console. The problem is that your resolution can be severely limited to the size of your browser. All right, and so everything kind of gets locked in. So maybe you like that, maybe you don't. Maybe you just want to have just you and your virtual machine, and you don't want to have all this other browser stuff kind of around the outside. So, you know, I don't usually recommend this when you're trying to work with your machines, um, because uh, also because the, the, when you do things this way, you can only see one virtual machine at a time. Um, and for challenges such as the mini hack, um, this is a good example how here I'll click off this tab so that I don't have multiple console sessions open here to the same machine. But, um, you know, I could I could open up one to my external machine and maybe drag that one over to one side and maybe I'll have another that goes to a CentOS router and I'll kind of have that that one over here. And, and now I can kind of start to manage my my interfaces and my screens and, you know, look at multiple computers at the same time. All right, so for a lot of your challenges on the day of the actual competition, you know, this is going to be a great skill to know how to do. Um, and so I definitely recommend uh, being comfortable popping open your virtual machines and starting your challenges this way. Um, the last thing that I'll kind of emphasize here about your channel or just about your interface um, is if you make this go full screen, uh, that usually will keep the same exact resolution that you didn't actually change the resolution in your virtual machine. And so full screen doesn't always seem to do what you think it might do. Um, but hiding over on the left side, on the far left, there is a little pop-out arrow. So you can click that little pop-out arrow. And this, of course, is changing some of your virtual machine settings to the environment. Um, and here you do have a full screen button. So you can click full screen. And now, now, hey, now you've got kind of a true full screen. You could hit escape to leave full screen mode, kind of go back to normal. Um, and the one that I always recommend is to learn how to use the scaling mode. This is in the little gear option, the settings option underneath full screen. Um, you can change scaling mode from off to local. And off to local will now resize. It kind of stretches things, not based so much on the resolution, but based on what's the size of the actual window. All right. And so most of the time you're going to start out, your scaling mode is going to be off and your window is going to be, you know, yay big. It's not going to be taking up your full screen. 
So if you want to have a nice visual that you can actually see, get into your virtual machines and start working on the challenges, many times you want to maximize your screen and then maybe change the local uh, change from scaling mode off to scaling mode local scaling. And now I've got a nice big visual for me to interact with my screen. But of course, if I need to see multiple virtual machines at the same time, you know, maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe more of a split screen style strategy is going to work out a little better for you. I don't know. You'll you'll practice it. You'll figure out what kind of works for you and works for how many monitors do you have and how big is your resolution and what are you dealing with you'll have to just kind of figure out what works for you but nevertheless it's like okay great now i can go about the challenges everything was spun up for me right there and uh, when i'm all done with the challenges i can now come back over to the interface here and say all right i could i could pause them and pausing them will save the state of the virtual machine on our virtual environment so then you could resume them later um, but also realize that things are all kind of spun up there on the fly. If you ever terribly screw up a virtual machine and you just want to start over, it's safe to just destroy it and then then just hit the create button again, just, just to clone them out. So maybe I'll try that. I'll see what this looks like to say, okay, I've got the environment. Everything's all turned on and there's machines that are turned on in the background. But if you click the destroy button, it'll turn them all off. It'll clean them all up. And that, that that's a good strategy. That definitely is what I recommend to you to do when you're all done. If there's nothing here that you want to come back to and save for next time, you know, if you want to save it for next time, you can hit the pause button, but otherwise I'll just hit the destroy button. Maybe if I jump over here quick, we'll see all of a sudden these machines, they're going to start turning off. They're going to start going away and uh, they get cleaned up on the server. So it's, uh, it's easy to go through, create a bundle of virtual machines for you to complete a challenge. And then when it comes time to take on another challenge, or if you want to reset the challenge to kind of do it again, you can just destroy everything and then go ahead and hit the create button again. So let's let, let's see what that would look like, right? Now now everything's been destroyed, and now of course I can go and hit the create button, and everything will 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 jump over here and we'll kind of watch it live happen. And and you'll see uh, as the create happens, some virtual machines get cloned out for you all here, all in a matter of a few seconds. So this is definitely what I recommend for how do you interact with our virtual environment? How do you take a challenge and clone it out and, and and deploy it and then turn all the virtual machines on and once you can kind of see everything has been turned on or everything's available then of course I could go ahead and hit the start button right and one, once I've hit the start button I'll see all the green lights come flashy flashy and I could watch all my machines turn on so that's my big recommendation for uh, how to interact here with our virtual environment um, if you ever uh, happen to see here, here I'll kind of manually kill one of these uh, just just so you can kind of see what one of the errors looks like um, it is possible using these virtual machines, you could just go in and shut the thing down manually. You know, yeah, of course, nothing's stopping you from doing that. You have full access to this machine. Um, but when you do that, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't stop your console session. So if you ever see this, this failed to connect to server, you've got like this no VNC, it'll give you like a little red air down at the bottom. Oh, what that usually means is you're trying to establish a visual console connection to a computer that's not turned on. Um, and so again, using the start button, don't actually shut down your machines using this using this virtual environment interface. You should stick as best as you can to using these because you don't want to have like half of them turned on and half of them turned off. Like it's going to get a little confused as to what what did you do to which machine. Just just let let the web interface use the start button. When you're all done with them, don't try manually shutting them down. Don't bother doing that. Just either hit the pause button here if you want to save their state, or if it's like no, this is all garbage. I, I did the challenge or I tried some stuff out. I was just messing around and I'm ready to clean it all up. Then just go ahead and hit the destroy button and the destroy button will, well, it'll take a second, but it'll go and clean all this stuff up here on our interface. So that's what we recommend. If you want a text version of everything that I just said, remember the text version of everything that I just said, that that's all available here at the, the how-to guide, how to get started. You can kind of go through, browse through these steps, see what the different buttons do. And we hope that you have a lot of fun here with the challenges. And definitely when you're all done, if you don't need to leave things turned on on our server, you know, obviously it'd make the resources go a little bit more efficient if we just sort of clean things up when we're done. But otherwise, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us, contact through the help, whatever. And we'd be happy to, to happy to help you out or, or uh, happy to uh, hear your feedback on how well did uh, the sandbox uh, go for you. So great. Have some fun. And uh, I look forward to seeing you more in future videos.